O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and suckling has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou has visited him. We have come this morning as the body of Christ to do holy business for our King. We've come in troubled times, but we've got high spirits. But we know that the eternal one is still on the throne. And so saints, lift up holy hands. Lift high your voices and praise the sovereign one. The mighty is our God. Holy are his judgments, and he is this morning altogether lovely. If you've got reason to praise him, then praise him. Praise the name of our God. He's worthy, I tell you. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you, God, for this worship experience. At this time, changing just a little bit. We're going to have our responsive reading by Elder McCullough, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. And then we'll have our morning hymn. Then we'll have our announcement. And then the choir will sing a couple of numbers of praise. We're here, so let's worship. Amen. We're in the house, so let's praise Him. If He woke you up this morning, then you got a right to praise Him. We're going to do those things, responsive reading, and then we'll go from there. All right? All right. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, beloved. O most holy and everlasting Father God, we come to you, Father God, in the manner that you have told us to, Father God. We come to you as humble as we know how. Father God, we lift our hands in total praise to you this morning. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning. Father God, we thank you for starting us on our way. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together yet one more time. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are God and you are God alone. You are God all by yourself. Father God, you created us. You created everything. Was not anything made that was not made by you. And we just want to say thank you. Father God, as we worship this morning, we pray that you guide our tongues. Father God, so that we can sing your praise. So that we can say your praise as we read your word, as we hear your word, as your word is preached to us, Father God. May it touch our hearts, may it make the necessary changes and the necessary corrections. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for life. We thank you for breath. We thank you for this opportunity to praise you and worship your holy and your righteous name. Father God, we ask you to bless the church. Bless the absent portion of the church. 
Father God, bless us from front to back and from side to side. Bless us, Father God. We thank you for the blessings of traveling mercies. But we thank you right now for the blessing of gathering mercies. So that we can gather together and fellowship, Father God. Oh, what a fellowship. What a joy divine as we are leaning on your everlasting arms. Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, who died for us so that we could have life and have it more abundantly, but in his holy name, we say thank you and amen. Our responsive reading this morning, as the pastor said, is the fifth chapter of Romans, the first through the eleventh verse. You don't need to stand, but if you would, that's in respect to the word of God, in reverence to his holy and righteous word. <laughs> Therefore, being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope yeah. and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us for when we were yet without strength yeah. in due time Christ died for the ungodly yeah. for scarcely for a righteous man will one die Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Mm -hmm. But God commanded his love towards us yeah. in that while we were yet sinners, yeah. Christ died for us. Yeah. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Yeah. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Yes. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Amen. And the Lord continue to bless the readers and hearers and doers of his holy and righteous word. <laughs> Our morning hymn. I don't think you heard me. Yeah. <laughs> Our morning hymn, which means we are looking for participation for us to lift our voice as we sing. Amen. We are on the battlefield. if you like. I don't know if you can sit down. <laughs> well...
was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. We are so happy to have you worshiping with us today. As you know, we actually come into the sanctuary on the first and the third Sundays. Mm -hmm. And we are thrilled that you decided to come join us Amen. in worshiping our Lord and Savior. Amen. On the second and third, uh, excuse me, second and fourth Saturdays, we come here and tape. And you're welcome to come to the taping also. Right. Keep, please keep in mind that we will be masked and we will, we will be social distanced. But anytime the doors are open to worship, please come join us. On Wednesdays, since it's midweek and you're, you're having withdrawal, please come join us at noon where we have our Sunday school review. And also at 630, come join us for our Bible enrichment hour. Now, if Sunday morning didn't get you to that high that you needed, join us on Mondays at 6.30, where we have our prayers. And because you're coming down from Wednesday, you need to come back to us on Thursday at 11.30 for prayer. We believe in worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The deaconess ministry Thanks you so far for the donations that you have been given. Amen. Our drive is still going. It's going until the first Sunday in August. And if you check your bulletins, it'll give you a list of the items that we are requesting. And we do thank you for everything you've done so far, but the drive is still on. Please keep our sick and our shut in and our bereaved families in mind. Give them a call, send them a card. Let them know that they're still loved and they're still being thought of. Thank you for listening. Amen.
we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all hope and fears are gone. Because I know who holds tomorrow. I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. Praise God for another Sunday. No matter how bad your week's been, I always get excited when we get towards Sunday. Because we understand that he did die on Friday. It was gloomy. The sun had gone down. It was gloomy on Saturday. But Sunday morning comes. The Bible said on the first day of the week, he arose with all power in his hand. I thank God for the first day of the week. Thank God for you that are here. Good to see you, Fram. Good to see you. Good to see you, good to see you. And I say it like that because I have to know who's in the building. Because y'all got that mask on, I'm just saying, I think it's, I think that's, say something. <laughs> or me with my Chris, I just stand back about five inches and, and pull your mask out so I know. So, this ain't high pass, I don't be knowing who it is. And you don't either, unless you just know their voice. Amen. Amen. Thank uh, our guest musicians who are not guest musicians. Amen. Amen. As Minister Yates. I got three preachers in the family. Amen. Now don't tell the other adopted ones because they'll be mad. Yeah, that's, that's Quentin. He playing the drums. I thought he was going to direct a little bit. I told him they had to go to work. I told him they had to go to work for their free food. You know, all this food we cooking at there. They got to do something. And washing dishes ain't going to make it because uh, you put them in the dishwasher. Hey, Chrissy. I didn't see the little one, so I was a little, I was, you know, I wasn't putting y'all together. No? Okay. All right. I got Keisha, who is directing, who is the oldest. And then Dr. Jamie Banks, who is the youngest. She's got a PhD in psychology, but she won't work on us. We need working on but she, she won't, she won't, she won't do it. She said, y'all too difficult. <laughs> see, see her shaking her head? She said, we too difficult. And then my mother is here with us, staying with us. <laughs> and, the, and the girls got her together this morning. They was, that was interesting. <laughs> they put me out, me and Quinn outside. But thank God for all of you. Good to see all of you. Good to see Dorothy this morning. Dorothy Sims. Dorothy Sims had a, uh, an uh, allergy and sinus and, and uh, uh, what is it? You under that mask. A asthma attack. She had it all because I know she has sinus as it is, but she had the asthma attack. She had the whole thing. And thank God that she's doing better. She's here today. Amen. Continue to lift up Robinette. You know, Robinette is suffering with high, high, high blood pressure, but she's still trudging through she's still moving through yeah still running m moving through thank god for her and the rest of you that are here uh, i don't think i missed anybody if you're visiting we're glad to have you here you're a part of the celebration all right and what we're celebrating we're celebrating how great our god is that's what we're celebrating we're we're celebrating it as if it was today that he got up out of the grave we're celebrating Good to see Brother Walter. He's still, still tunneling through. Not feeling his best, but he's doing better than he was. And, and we thank God for that. Continue to pray for our sick and shut and Pray for Sister Annie Locke. She wasn't doing too good last night. Keep her lifted up in prayer. Along with the rest of our sick and shut in. Uh, that God will have mercy upon them. You don't know how you're going to go through life. So you better go through trying to be nice to folks. Because you never know 
who's going to have to get you a glass of water or bring you some drugs or alcohol or anything, whatever it is. Yeah, alcohol. Y'all ain't never had no toddy? Y'all never had no hot toddy? Did y'all get Catholic on me in a minute or something? <laughs> All right. Miss Wingo, Deacon S. Wingo. It's good to see you. I, I thought this was an extended hangout at the home front. Oh, no. <laughs> she said she, she stayed. And, and, and I agree with that. Sometimes we stay too long. That's good. That's good. That's good. I didn't expect you back today, but thank God for you. Let me, Karen Edmonds, God bless you. Her mother passed and she bared her mother. Pray for her. She's here with sitting next to Willa. The rest of you that are here. I just want to touch for a few minutes on our lesson, which is Leviticus chapter 4 this time. Going through Leviticus. We're going through these uh, uh, books of the Bible, certain sections of them. And, and I want you to turn to Leviticus chapter 4. It's good to see Linda today. She wasn't feeling good, but she's doing better. That's Linda C. Linda Simmons is at home doing better. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. I'm almost, I'm, I'm almost afraid to answer the phone sometime. So much sickness. So much killing. Can anybody make any sense out of all this killing? I mean, we're pretty, we pretty smart people. I have no idea why we're killing each other. Just ride by and just shoot up folks. And shoot little babies. Baby out there playing ball. Just, just shot them up. I, I, the, the world needs Jesus. I don't care how you say it. I don't care how you say it. The world needs Jesus. Needs a better walk with Jesus. Because this, this, is, this is ridiculous. Thank God you're saved. And you better, you ought to get happy for the mere fact that it could have been us. Not because I'm the pastor that the bullet will go, you know, you he the pastor, go around him. No. You know, the bullet has no name on it. It has no name on it. So so continue to pray. Leviticus chapter four. I want to read uh, just a few verses that I, I would read all of, but it's it's just too much to read. I'm gonna pick out some things on here. And let me start at verse one. And I think I'll read to verse 3, and that, that'll give, me a, give you an idea where we're at. Uh, Leviticus chapter 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to have been done, and shall do them against any of them, then it says, if the priest that is anointed do sin, according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for, bring for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord, for a sin offering. And he shall bring, uh, I didn't want to go that far. That's three, right? Yes, I'm glad y'all staying with me. That's where, as far as I want to go. L let, me, let, me, let me help you with this, because I, I had to ask, you have to ask God to help you with stuff. You know that. When you're confused or when you don't know what to do, stop talking to everybody. Go, go, go talk to God. Say, God, here I am. Look, I don't understand this. I read it or I don't understand this. What, what, you, what you saying? And God will open up your eyesight. I was reading the Leviticus chapter 4 as we were doing this study. And if I had to have a title, I, I want to put on there blood cleansing power. <laughs> Blood cleansing power, if you had to have a title. But, but let, me, let me do this for you. Imagine this. You've got a friend who has committed his or her life to Christ several years ago. Okay? And for a time, they seem deeply, deeply concerned about the matters of faith. This person read their Bible, they attended church, they took part in other activities. They appeared to be growing. But one Sunday, that enthusiasm faded. They turned to other activities and quit coming to church. 
You pray for them. You invited them back several times. But they always have some reason why they couldn't come. I know this is going to hit some of us because it's already hitting me. I already heard. Just going to say ouch. Just going to say ouch. Now, now, now they, come to, they come to you because you're still at the church. You're still in the church. And they, and, and they say, I want to come back to the Lord. But I'm not sure if the Lord will take me back. Remember, she had accepted him. She loved him. And then she ran away from him. And other stuff got more important than worshiping God. She understands the very nature, the serious nature of forsaken Christ. But she talked to church folks and they gave her the wrong information. She said, I've accepted him once. Can he accept me now? I accepted Christ as my personal savior, but I, I've turned my back on him. And, and I want to know what would you say to that friend? Here's what we say. All running away from God, that ain't no big thing. Not going to church, they only want your money. You know, this COVID thing going on. And you know, I'm scared, you know, to be anywhere where there's people. Or, or, or they'll say, you know, I've done it a lot of times. I've, I've gone to church and then for six months, and then I take six months summer vacation. I take six months summer vacation. I'll be back in September. Come in September, you go two Sundays, then you don't see them to October. Then before you know it, it's time for the Thanksgiving Christmas break. And we're talking about people who are not children. We're talking about grown people, such as you and I. Or they'll say stuff like, just say you're sorry. Go to church every week, put a couple of dollars in the tray and everything be fine. Or you would say, you know, you did what? You turned your back on God? Then they get real religious. You know, Hebrews chapter 6 says, uh, right down there at, church, at verse 4, for it is impossible to bring back to re uh, repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the ages. Get real religious. You know, shame on you for rejecting the Son of God. Shame on you. Shame, shame on turning your back. Because the Bible goes on in chapter six, of, uh, chapter four of, of Hebrews and says, you know, when you do this, you're like nailing him to the cross over and over again and holding him up to public shame. Now, they got the scripture right, but they got the meaning of the scripture wrong. You still haven't helped this person. You told her, well, it's all right if you don't come. Just, you know, put a couple dollars in. You know, they always want money. You know, show up late and, you know, leave early. Don't shake nobody's hand. You know, walk by folks. Does it sound very familiar to you? Be gone, say amen, even under your mask. Just lift up your head. Stop looking down. Talking about, I'm reading while he's doing that part. <laughs> don't forget, I've been pastoring 40. I've been pastoring y'all 40 years now, remember? I've been preaching 50. Talk to me. All right? Now, would your reaction to your friend's statement be those things? Or would your reaction be, let's see how we can deal with this sin? Let's see how we can deal with this concern. Have you accepted Jesus? Yes. Have you messed up? Yes. Go tell Jesus. Tell him everything. Now, in telling him everything, he already knows everything. He just wants you to admit to what you need to admit to. And the admittance has to be individual. I can't 
admit for Linda and John what they do. That's not my job. My job is not to sit in and hold court on what Fran does or Beverly Birch does. That's not my job. I don't care where I see them coming out, it doesn't make any difference. It's not my job. If you see pastor coming out the liquor store, it ain't your job. How you know I didn't go on the other part? Y'all ever been to Premier? Don't, don't sit there and tell no story. If you go in Premier liquor store, most of the newer ones, they got the wine and liquor on this side. They got the cheese and stuff and uh, bakeries and baked good stuff on the right side. But they got one door. Yeah, I've been there. Right next to Delta Sonic over there on Maple. Then they always go to one out on transit. Don't make no difference. I'll tell you where they are. Stop, stop sneaking. As if God can't see. Let, let me run in here right quick and duck down so that God won't see what it is I'm doing. You forget. Now, I may not see. And it's none of my business what I see. But you got to know today that what you do, it has a consequence that goes along with it. And there's the responsibility that you have with God to answer him. He going to get the answer. He going to pose the question. And he's going to get the answer. Now I'm not giving you an excuse to sin. Because sin is wrong. But stop trying to make folks think. Especially in the church world. That we're all holy and righteous. And never done anything. And walk on the tightrope. We're sinners. Messed up. Vile. No good for nothing sinners. But thank God for the grace of God. That handles my sin. Now I need to say this to you that when God handles your sin, he may have to whoop you. He may have to spank you a little bit. You belong to him. He may have to jerk it. You know, I've seen people that the dog won't act right. They got him on the leash. They'll jerk him back. That's a command. You're not going to, they said, you're not going to take me down the street I don't want to go to. I'm your master. You're not my master. You, they jerk that thing. He stop. And you say stop. God sometimes has to jerk us. Put us down in situations that we don't like to get our attention. To help us to understand that you're not in charge of nothing. We don't even have charge over the breathing that's going on in our bodies. Because if God does not give us to breathe, you're in trouble today. But thank God that he's given us the ability to breathe. And you ought to open up your mouth and unstop yourself and say, thank you, God, just for the breath I breathe. Thank you for the breath I breathe. Even if I'm hurting, thank you for the breath I breathe. Even if I'm going through trials and thank you for the breath I'm breathing. Because, baby, I'm here to tell you, it could get worse. It could be worse. Let me run on because I promised myself I wouldn't hold you two hours. More than a half, but not two. Here's the question. You say, well, how does this, I'm going to hook this up with Leviticus in a minute. Can sin lead you to lose your salvation? Some people say yes. Some people say no. The answer is no. Watch this. When he saves you, he does a complete job on the salvation. That no matter how far out you get, if he saves you, he'll come and get you. How do you know that? The prodigal son says, he said to his father, Give me my stuff. I'm gone. I'm out of here. I've let, I'm leaving. I don't want to be bothered no more. I'm tired of your rules. I don't want to be in at 11 o'clock. And I don't want to take the trash out no more. And I'm not washing no dishes. Dad said, all right. Here your, here your inheritance. Here, you're getting it now. And the boy leaves. You know the story. The boy gets into riotous living. And the people that he thought were his friends use him. Until all that he's got is gone. You got some friends like that? 
Don't show up till you got something. Use what you got, then you can't find them. Come on, talk to me. You got some cousins, some sisters and brothers that, that will always got the hand out. Well, you ought to do it because we, we sister and brother. No, 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 no. Get a job like everybody else. Now, if something wrong with you, that's a different story. If something physically wrong, that's a different avenue. But, but, but to just, just do it to, for the, no, 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 no. I'm not helping you. Pastor, you mean, yes, I am. I'll show you where jobs are. I will even help you to fill out your application, but I'm not going to just give you anything. Because then you don't appreciate it. Then when it's time to pay back, I'm going down somebody's street. We lose friendship because people won't return. No, they owe you. If you owe somebody this morning, just going to slide it over to them while I'm preaching. Won't nobody see it. Go on, go on get your envelope. Want a brown envelope? Put their name on it. You know you owe them some money. Everybody done got quiet. Go on, slide across that seat and give them their money back and quit playing around. Because a lot of people have lost friendship over money. And what does money do? It doesn't do anything but destroy the relationship. Sin destroys the relationship not between me and you. It, it destroys the relationship between you and God. Pastor ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. I did not create you. I was created myself. I was put together just like he put together Adam and Eve. And you need to know that you need to have a better understanding of your relationship with God. So if you sin, guess who you need to go to? Oh, come on now. You need to get back to God. You need to hurry up and say, God, I'm sorry. And mean what you say. Don't just say, I'm sorry, just to get him off your back. It don't work like that. Have you gone to the morning glory and not seen God? Have you gone in the pits of hell and God was not there? If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the utmost parts of the... He's already there. So who are you hiding from? It's time to get clean. It's time to get truthful. It's time to get honest with ourselves. That we are sinners and we need some help. Our world is messed up because of sin. And our world needs some help. Can I lose my salvation? No. Now, how you, why you can't lose it? Because you didn't have it in the first place. <laughs> so you can't lose something you ain't never had. If God didn't give it to you, you would have never had salvation. You would have never had a desire to come to him. You would have never had a yearning inside to say there's something better than what I'm doing. And somebody said there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's name. Somebody told us about him, but then there's an experience you have after they told you because the, the salvation comes by hearing and then hearing by the word of God. And when God snatches your heart, you have a desire to come to him. Ain't nobody got to drag you down the aisle. Ain't nobody got to go and touch you and put oil on you. No, no. When God puts his hand on you, you, you ever remember when mama put, that, put, your, put her hand on you, that special hand? Oh, nobody remember that? You know, no, I ain't talking about, you know, hey, baby. I'm talking about when she lay that hand on there. And mama's hand be getting heavy. And you be trying to get from underneath mama's hand. And she got a grip on you. And it ain't even the hand she right with. She right-handed. She got your grip with the left and lay letting you go. Like, like, like I'm doing this, like I'm doing this, 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 this napkin. You trying to fight. She got you. Oh, y'all don't forgot that? I ain't forgot it. I feel it all in here. And she's sitting right there. Throw you down the step kind of move. Oh, you ain't going back to the stop? Oh, I told you to go back. And you ain't going back? I was at the bottom. Come on, y'all. I ought to have some help in here. Now, she might tell you, now, I ain't never done nothing to that boy. <laughs> Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. <laughs> Leave me alone, Veronica. I'm Veronica bothering me. I'm Veronica was on TV the other night. She's a star. She's taking autographs after church. All right. I did that because I want to get these five points in and then four points and then I'm through. First of all, then I need to, before I get to the points, I need to make you understand and make sure you understand. When you read the book of Leviticus, it, it gives these offerings. 
it describes five offerings, which are God's provision for dealing with human weakness. Because we, we're weak. Come on, y'all. Stop acting like you're not. You're weak. And you're hurting. Nobody knows the hurt you're going through but you. But I know if I'm hurting, somebody else is hurting too. And it's not always because somebody did something to you. Life has a way of making you hurt. Just watching the news can make you hurt. 30 minutes of watching the news can make you hurt. If not, even if you don't know the person, you'd be saying, Lord, have mercy. And you feel it, but then you realize, Lord, you've been good to me. I, it could have been me. A bullet could have come by my, you know, and you just, you just hurt. You hurt for your kids. You want them to do better. You want them to be better. You want them to be better than you. And they out there just, the world got them by the coattail and just swinging them back and forth. Just swinging them. Just, just like a limp piece of paper and you just praying. You hurting. You're hurting because your spouse won't act right. Got the best thing going and, he, and that person and spouse can be man or woman. You're hurting because you got pain in your body and the doctor don't know what to do with it. And they keep saying, let's try this. Sometimes when they say that too many times, it's really because they just don't know. Because the body is an intricate part of something that doesn't make sense. I got two eyes. Why do I have two eyes? Why do I have one nose? Why do I have two ears? Why do I have five fingers? You sit there and you wonder, and then you've got to, if you're saved, you've got to come back to the realization, it's got to be an awesome God somewhere. Why would I need five on each hand? Why do I need five on each toe, on, on each foot? Why do I have one heart that, that, that pumps good blood and then takes out the old blood? Because if you look at your hand, you can see this dark, darkness that's the old blood that the bad blood the dirty whatever the proper word and it's going out then if you look hard enough you can see the, some red blood going because God is just awesome he's I mean he is just awesome he just he's just so awesome that that what he does just amazes me even 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 one tongue 32 teeth why 32 teeth why two legs why, why, why arms and, and shoulders? And, and it's an amazing thing. You've got to come to the realization that there's a God, but you also got to come to the realization that when Adam messed up in the Garden of Eden, he messed it up for everybody. He was our representative. And if the representative messes up, then the company's in trouble. If the CEO messes up or the CFO messes up, then the company is in trouble. When Adam messed up, he caused havoc to come upon mankind. And that's why the Bible says that women will have, la have hard labor in, in giving and delivery of children. And men will have work and gain nothing from it. God has punished us. But God, I'm sorry. Well, you just can't say sorry. There's got to be some action behind the sorry. And when you look at the book of Leviticus, he's telling them, yes, I've seen your sorry, but this is what I want out of your sorrow. I want you to be sorrowful, but I want you to show me why you're sorrowful. I don't want you to just tell me you're sorrowful. I want you to tell me why. I do remember asking the girls one time when they were small, why, why, why are you, I'm sorry, why are you sorry? Why, 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 undone, undone, they said, I said, why are you sorry? You're trying to get them there. You got it? Tell me. Because what, what it was is I really didn't know what they did at that point, Sister Jesse. So I figured I'd weed them a little bit. So, so what you sorry for? for? What, did, what did you do? <laughs> daddy, I'm sorry. Well, well tell, tell daddy what, or tell daddy what, what you did. And, 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 they, and they cry the thing out. Finally, they come up with, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, because I, I broke that dish you told me not to touch. Oh, ain't nobody in here with me. Ain't nobody never broke mama's dishes. Ain't, ain't, ain't never broke one of mama's fine china glasses that she done had for, and tell you, done had it for 40 years, and here you come. I told you not to bother them, told you I'd put them up. No, you're going to help me, uh-huh. Now you don't help me, you done broke one. I'm, I'm sorry. You're really not sorry. You're sorry that you got caught. 
you're scared because you know that you weren't supposed to touch it. I need you to get scared of your relationship with God and the sin that you keep doing in your life and just saying to God, I'm sorry, as if to say, okay, cast this off. I said I was sorry five times. Seventeen times don't make no difference. God is not receiving your sorry unless there's some action to go along with the sorry. Because the action is that you start trying to walk better in the newness of life and start trying to do the same thing over. Said, because somebody said, just say you're sorry. Just say you're sorry. God will hear that. God does hear, but you better also know that he does work on you. I am sorry. And I am sorry that I got caught. Oh yeah. If, you, if you're going to get honest, if you're going to come to God honest, if you're going to come to God and, 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 and pour, out, pour out that which has got you covered and hovered and hold and held, then you've got to get real with yourself, especially in the church world. This pandemic has helped us to understand that we've been phonified. We've been acting like phonies in the church. We got all, have you noticed, we ain't had one missionary meeting, one deaconess meeting, well, they may have had it on Zoom, but we ain't had a whole lot of meetings and the church is going on because it's not the meeting, it's what we do to each other and with each other. If, sis, if Mother Stanley is at home sick, then your missionary work is to pick up that phone and call Mother Stanley and say, Mother, I just called. I'm bringing by a loaf of bread. I know you don't need it, but I was in this neighborhood. How you doing, baby? Or pick up a card. But no, the church is so concerned about the air conditioning working and the heat working and who's going to sing and who's going to play and who's going to direct and who's going to preach that we miss that people are coming in here hurting and sorrowful and in pain and they need a hug and we can't hug, but they need a hug. They need a smile. They need to know that God is able to forgive you of your sins. We are hurting, children hurting. When the last time you grabbed your grandchild and just hugged them? What, what you want, Granny? Nothing. Just come here. Hug the devil out you. They hugged us. They hugged us. They, talk, they told us, but they hugged us. They had long discussions with us. Come on, y'all. You didn't have no parents that had no long discussion. Now, you didn't like the discussion. I promise you didn't like the discussion. And don't let them get old and go to telling you stuff. Woo. Now, now, the insurance papers, that's, oh, God. You know, the insurance papers are the, or oh, this is here, or, you know, get my wheel out. And Joseph, let me, and I hate that. But it's a part of life. They get you prepared for that which you need. God is getting us prepared by sending the pandemic. I know God did that. He allowed this pandemic to come in, to drop down, to weed out some folks in the church that ain't church. And weed out some folks that say they're Christians are not Christians. But I'm here to tell you this morning, you can become a Christian today. You can seek his face today. You can ask him to forgive you today. You can lean your hands out toward him and say, Lord, come into my life, Lord. You don't need no magic potion. You don't need no rags. You don't need no spit. You don't need no running up and down the pulpit. What you need is to open up, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved. And I want you saved because, honey, it's getting late in the evening. And the sun is going down. And God is on his return. And you better know him for yourself. You better know that he is the bright and the morning star. He is the fairest of tech. You better know that he's able to do that which you cannot do. So much so, he does exceeding abundantly more than you can ask for. I ain't going to get to no points. Because I'm excited about what he's done. So let me share this and get out of your way and let you go home. Don't get it backwards. Usually when we deal with somebody who's struggling with a different sin than ours, we judge them. We communicate condemnation rather than care. We hate sin, but instead of loving the sinner, we despise them. If I messed up, love me anyway. Love your children anyway. We, got, we, got, we all got children that ain't walking right. We all got children that have been out there doing their thing. You're going to stop loving them because they did what you tried to do? 
Oh, you missed that, didn't you? You mad at them because they doing what you can't do no more? Why would I, what sense would it make hurt leg, arthritis, told me I got a, 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 my vertebrae separated back a little bit, and, and they're going to have to give me an injection, and I'm going to try to get out here and dance like I'm 17. Is you lost your mind? It's not that I don't remember how to dance. It's the same dances. They just put a little twist to it. It's the same dances. Basically, they just put a little extra, you know, gyration to it. Some of it they need not do no more. I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching. You don't have to listen. You can be mad if you want to, but listen. What we can't do anymore isn't because we've gotten so holy. Some of it is because we done got old. And hurting. Go to move too fast and we like in the bed for the next five days. Pick up a piece of paper. Have you ever picked up something off the floor in the kitchen and couldn't stand up? You went down good. Say, what you standing down there for? I can't get up. That comes with life. And the older you get, some problems gonna come. And that comes with age. But what I don't want you to forget is that we have to judge folks by loving them, not by condemning them. And because they can do what you can't do, why are you getting mad? Why are you getting upset? Why are you talking about them? How dare you open your mouth and talk about anybody? And let me go down this alley since I'm on it. How dare we talk about any child that got pregnant when we don't know what happened when our parents got together. So stop that. Thank God they're here. Look at your own life. Look at all the stuff you didn't get, all the stuff you might have missed, some of the stuff that you, that you went through that you don't remember. You need to remember that God remembers, and if you're faithful to God, he'll take that pain of what happened years ago and smooth it out for you. Because you can't hold that pain, y'all. Unfortunately, folks have been raped and molested and all of that. Unfortunately, but we can't hold it and we can't judge them because they've been through that. All we can do is remember how God helped us out of our mess and how God saved us when we were in our mess. And when God loved us in spite of what we did, he loved us so much so that he sent his son who knew no sin to die for me and rose again. And he loves me. This I know. Not only because the Bible tells me so, but because I know for myself. He's done great things for us. Done great things. Read those 12 verses. Write these things down. And then let's go home. I'm not even going to deal with them. Too tough if the Lord say so. You do know this is the Lord's sermon. This is not my sermon. Yeah. This is, it, 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 uh, they, they gave reason for how the people of Israel were to act. They had messed up. Know that. They had messed up big time. They, there's not much in the Old Testament when it talks about the Israelites that you can't see them walking through, messing up. Walking through, messing up. God send water. He sends water, mess up. We hungry. He sends quail, fresh quail every morning. Uh, all we getting is quail. They messed up. Get to the river. How are we going to get across? See that Moses? We told you to leave us where we were. We was all right, but you had to, you had to, you had to be talking about you in charge because God said, I am. And now we out here in the Red Sea and, and there are pharaohs behind us and water in front of us. You done, mess, you done jacked us up. You get ready to get us killed. We ain't nowhere to go. Well, what do you think about our God when it relates to that in your own life? When he puts you up against some Red Sea situation and has the enemy coming behind you and they close by. Do you start yelling at the pastor or the chairman of the deacon board? If, if it wasn't for you all, we wouldn't be in this jam. Come on, really? Did, did, did we hold your hand and cross you across the street? Did we tell you to go ahead and do it? Did we give you permission? Or did you do it because you thought you was old and big and bad enough? I'm old. I'll tell him off. I'll get him straight. Let me tell him. I'm using me because I don't want you to get mad. But I do want you to get upset. 
and correct yourself. Take these points. Every sin is serious. Take them. Every sin. He's talking about Leviticus. He's talking about the children of Israel. Every sin is serious. Because we're turning now to this sin offering. That's what chapter 4 is about. Every sin. God has called you his. You have a responsibility to that love and have depend upon God's love and strength to give you peace in the middle of trials. That's number one. Now watch this. Because he talks about unintentional sin. Does anybody know what unintentional sin is? Well, the word un ought to help you. Didn't mean to do it. You didn't set out to do it. You didn't purpose to do it. There are some unintentional sins in our lives. There are some intentional sins. God names all of them. And then there's some unintentional sins. He names them too. Because sin is sin. Please don't get that confused. There are some things that I didn't realize was a sin. Unintentional. But once you find out it's a sin, then you're intentionally doing it. Are you getting it? If you don't speak to Joseph today, it's because you didn't see Joseph by half, perhaps. Or you had something on your mind. I've had that happen a lot of times. Something on your mind, you see the person, you really don't speak to them, but what's wrong with them? Your mind is somewhere else, and, and you, really, you really didn't speak. It's, a, it, it's unintentional. You didn't do it on purpose. But when you purposely walk by Joseph every Sunday, and you and him cross paths and you don't speak, then that's a sin. Because we are to greet each other. You should have been on, you should have been on Wednesday night. Should have been on Wednesday night at 6.30. Elder, Elder Wisman was dealing with that hugging and kissing. That's in the scripture. So every sin is serious. The second thing, sin requires death to restore the relationship with God. For the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So the second thing is, and the point emphasized, the first, sin is not something trivial. You cannot simply say, oh, I'm sorry, or I didn't mean to do that, or, and go on your merry way. The Israelites who sinned unintentionally were required to present a sin offering. That's how we get the offering. They were required to kill an animal. God had planned out how he wanted it. But watch this, for you and I, we can't pay the penalty. And if you read the Old Testament, they couldn't either. They kept doing that every, every Sabbath day. They had to bring the spotted lamb, or, or if they were poor, they had to bring grain flour. If they didn't have much money. They brought something to present to the priest that their priest might go into the Holy of Holies and seek forgiveness, but they had to bring an offering. Well, we don't have in 2020 enough money to satisfy God. We don't have enough hallelujah, love you, whatever's to, 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 to please God. God needs a something that will die for our sins. Since we got to sin, then I can't die. Miss that, huh? See, I got sin. You got sin. So in order for there to be a reconciliation and a justification, somebody's got to die who has no sin. Because if you read this story of Leviticus, they were bringing spotless animals at one point to the priest. They had to bring the priest uh, animals who had no, no tarnish and no, 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 no wear on them and was spotless and was, didn't have no, no blemish on them. That's the word I love, blemish. And, and they had to present that to the priest and the priest would take that blood and shed it on the altar and the sin will be forgiven. We ain't got enough lambs and, 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 and goats and pigeons and, ro and robins and dove. The read the Old Testament, he said, bring, he had levels because he knew some people couldn't bring uh, uh, a lamb. They didn't have the money. So he said, bring, did y'all hear what I said? They didn't have the money 
but he told them to bring what they had. If you don't come to church because you don't have no money, that's the wrong reason, baby. You need to come to church to get your soul saved and your mind fixed and your heart regulated. And if you don't have no money, it's all right. Somebody else got money because God will always take care of what belongs to him. And where they don't have, he'll send somebody we don't even know to give to us what we need. I've seen it happen too many times. God's going to take care of his church. But you can't use the COVID and the offering no more. You got to come up with something better than that. You got to come up better with, I'm staying home because I got the COVID. Stay home then. Well, now, if you're going to stay home, stay home. That means no grocery store, no cleaners, no farmer's market, no fresh fruit. Not going to, you know, get you a new dress at Macy's because they got a sale going on. 25% off to 25% will give you 50 cents plus you got a coupon. <laughs> How am I talking, Carl, uh, Chrissy? Because I got a coupon. And the coupon expires at 5 today. So hurry up, Pastor, because we've been here almost an hour. We've been here a few. Uh, we're always here about an hour and a half and I'll let you go. And, I, and I, got to, I got to go out there, you know, I got to run right quick because, you know, the one over here at Boulevard Mall ain't, ain't no good no more. So I got to go out to Galleria because Boulevard Mall ain't got nothing. I, I've been checking out Sister Shirley Harris. And, and so you go out there, you run, you got your stuff, got your house, you know, your shoes on, you're comfortable. And you go in there and then you find out they got, if you open up a Macy's account, along with the coupon, along with the sale, then we'll give you another 35% off if you open it up today. Am I talking right? So, so you really got the dress that was that you wanted was $119. When you get through, it's $39. You feel good, don't you? <laughs> Look at this dress. It's sharp. Pleats where you want them. Lays nice on you. It's the color you've been wanting. And then you find, walk up to the shoe store. I think that matches. I, I, you know, well, maybe it's a little darker. I'm doing that in, in, in a humorous but serious way that we, we pay more attention to everything but the God that saved us. You're paying too much attention to COVID. Put your mind on Jesus. Yes, have some sense with it. Please pay attention. Hear the word. Find out what they do in the CDC and all of that. But don't get so hung on COVID that you miss the blessings that God going to send your way. COVID's been here for 19 months. Are you still here? You might have even had a taste of it, but are you still here? You might have had somebody that died from it, but are you still here? Well, it ain't because you've been so good and holy and righteous. It's because of the mercies of a holy God. And because he's God, he has mercy on whom he has mercy. And grace on whom he has grace. And since he has saved me one more day, my shout is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The third point, and there's only one more. Every confessed sin is forgiven. Every confessed sin. That means you've got to open your mouth to the Lord. And please stop going to these people. Tell them, I'm going to confess my sin to them. Go to God. I'm not confessing. And Esau and, 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 and um, Walter and John and Harold, they know I love them to death. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to confess my stuff to them. What they going to do with it? They got enough going on in their own lives. Talking about, and I got to take the fastest stuff too? Oh, no. Y'all think I sit at home waiting for y'all to call so y'all can dump all that stuff at my house? And I'm here. I can't even walk. Sister Jess and I, we, we having a hard time. Some of the rest of y'all, knees hurting, legs hurting, back hurting. Uh, the long, somebody asked me, do you preach them? Standing over the pulpit last Sunday, I was hurting so bad, I didn't know what to do. But that didn't stop the preaching because God, when you think about how good God been to you, then you ought to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You ought to open up to God and say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done and I'm sorry for who I've hurt. And then go out there and tell them you're sorry. I told God, no, no, now it's time to tell each other. If I offended you, because sometimes you can offend somebody and not know it. But then sometimes the other person gets offended because that's just them. If it ain't their party, they offended. If it ain't all the attention on them, they offended. 
Well, nobody talked about my dress. We saw your dress. We saw it. We saw it. Stop parading. Stop chasseying around. We saw it. We saw your nice hat. Shoes go with it. Ain't they pretty? And, I, and I'm standing here. That's nice to compliment folks, but the compliment, to the person being complimented ought not look for, you ought to know how you look when you come out the house. I'm not saying be considered, but you ought to kind of look at the mirror. I'm afraid, Sister Robinette, some of our friends, younger friends, ain't looking in the mirror. I'm scared of what I'm seeing. I'm scared of it, and I'm hoping that some parent, some mother, some auntie will say something in the air, baby. That's just not you. Be nice with it. Baby, that's not you. And they're going to wear it anyway, but you couldn't wear some of that stuff if you look twice in the mirror. You can't tell me you look twice. But then somebody told me, yeah, they look twice because they're going to see what they want to see. They see what they see. Fourth thing, and I'm through. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. Now, you got a sin and you're trying to cleanse it, it don't work. You can't get your sins clean. Did you hear me? You, I, can't get our sins clean. All right, try this. Go home today. Take your filthy, dirty hands you got right now. Wash them. Dry them off. Give it about three minutes. Go back and wash them. Watch that dirt. They dirty again. You can put it in the same pull up, pull up the plug on in the in the basin and 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 do it about four or five times. The, as soon as you get clean, dirt starts getting on you, collecting. Yeah. That's why we got hand sanitizer and all of that, and we just keep doing it. Wash our hands, or we keep doing that, or shake hands, or we keep doing it, or just because we've been outside, keep, and our hands are dirty. Put some money in your hand. You need to wash them. Ain't no telling where money been. It's our money is there. It ain't also the. It ain't just the evil. You know, money is the root of all evil. It's dirty. So you wash and you get dirty. So you're always getting dirty. So there's nothing that's going to cleanse me, because even the stuff I'm washing with ain't gonna keep them clean. I can get them clean for the second, but I need something to keep them clean. And I thought about that thing as I closed and get ready to take our offering and go home. Have you noticed when Christ comes in your life, he cleanses you from all unrighteousness? Well, if you didn't know that, let me tell you, all your sins, he already knows. He takes your sins, when you come to him and confess him and ask for forgiveness, he takes your sins and puts them behind them. Now, if you know anything about a car, a car has a rear view mirror, does it not? And, and, and the newer cars, what I call newer, they usually just have the one mirror. Now they got mirrors on the side. And one side says things seem closer than the other side. And I looked at that thing. But have you noticed what size they are? They're not that big. The, 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 the rear view mirror is not that big. And the side, unless you got a big old truck, the side mirrors aren't that big. And I said, why is it that the front window, preach, Pastor Preacher, is so big, but the little side and the rear view is so small? And I thought about, does anybody know why? I know you know. God has made it so that man, who is very intelligent because of God, said that we need to stop looking back to things that we used to do and used to hold on because they're, they're in the past and they're small compared to your future in Jesus Christ because the windshield wiper is big. I mean, the windshield of the front of the car is big so that you can see down the road and around the corner and down through the valley because you need to keep your eye on him who is able to keep you from falling on him who can pick you up and turn you around on him who can keep you from danger seen and unseen from him who is the God of the salvation of our God on him who lights up the world and gives us joy in the midst of the storm on him does anybody know him 
Is he your bread in a starving land? Is he your shelter in the time of storm? Is he your joy in the midst of sorrow? Do you know him? Well, if you know him, go say, God, I'm sorry to him. I'm sorry I did it to him. And watch what he'll do. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll set you on the right path. He'll give you joy in the midst of your sorrow. You got to know him. And I looked at, I looked out, went to the car and looked at it and said, Lord, the windshield is big. And the rear view is small. Because most times you got to adjust whoever sits in the car. If Uncle Benny sits in there. Then when he gets out, um, Ron got to maybe adjust it down or adjust it up. Down. All right. The, the, adjust, the adjustment. But have you noticed you ain't got to adjust looking forward? Because he gives you enough vision to see all the way across. You're going to get this later. And you're going to shout that God has given you to look to him. And stop looking behind you. So what they don't like you? So what they didn't speak this morning? What did you do? I was happy in Jesus. I was speaking to folks. I was saying good morning because I realized that last night I was crazy ill or sick or painful or couldn't sleep and God got me through the night. I'm tired as I can be, but I'm not going to, they not, they not, you're not speaking. He didn't speak to me. Did you speak? Cause I tell you in a heartbeat as pastor, if you don't speak to me, don't look for me. There's more of y'all than there is me. Well, he didn't speak to me. Did I see you? Come on by and shake hands. Let's hug a little bit. Tell a joke or something. L light. Let me let you go. It's 1127. I'll stick to my eye and a half. Because I want you back next time. But, but you do know this is the norm. This is the new norm. 10 o'clock. We will be going from Saturdays to Sundays in a little while, but, but we're playing this safely because now we got another variant coming up. It's already here? All right, so we got another variant that's already in the land. I don't care what y'all say, I'm washing my hands, I'm wearing my mask. In a minute, I got my mask, I got two. I got one in the car, one in my pocket, just in case I get out the car and don't have one. I got me two or three that I carried right in the car. Because you know how you get to the store and you got to take your bag in and you forget to take the bag and got to spend it? No, no. I ain't playing with y'all. Love y'all to death. Come see about you, pray over the phone, which is whatever we have to take. But I'm not, I'm not just going to put myself in harm's way if I know it's harm's way. But I'm not going to forsake the right to setting the coming together of the righteous either. I enjoyed the day. I enjoyed seeing y'all. I enjoyed it. Well, thank God that they're here and they're not, not as bad as I, what I thought, you know, bad, but thank God for that. Thank God for that. All right. Come on, Brother Chairman. The church is open, Brother Deacon.